So let's talk a little bit zooming out from the the technical side on the content wars. So everyone here is is probably very familiar with Google. Google remains a monopoly, like Dan mentioned. This is really one of the few monopolies that exist, if not the only one that exists in the world today, where they really own 90% plus of the US-based market share, 85% plus of global market share of users who use a search engine. There's certainly some chinks in their armor. There's opportunities for certain companies like Apple, if they wanted to, to remove them as a default search engine from the iPhone, which could have some great impact on this. But we haven't seen some of the initial innovations we saw, like Bing incorporated ChatGPT into their experience, and we were all expecting a big shift in market share. We really haven't seen that play out in the past year. Google still remains the dominant player. There's 8 billion searches every day. That's a huge number to conceive of. There's also a big profit motive that they have. They currently do about $250 billion a year in Google Ads revenue with a strong goal to continue to push up that money. And the, the way they make money is selling ads, but the only reason they have the opportunity to sell ads is really because of the quality of their organic results. And so this creates... A, a challenge for a lot of businesses. Google owns all of our demand. When someone's looking for something that could be relevant for your products or services, they're likely going to go in through this platform. And if you as a business needs to compete for that attention and for those eyeballs, it really puts us in a position where we have to invest heavily in behaving very similar to a media company and making sure we have very relevant, high quality content that is relevant to the search engines as well as the users so that we can win visibility for these searches. And it really is a challenging operating environment for a lot of companies since they have such a stranglehold on all of that demand. Just because right now this is the case, there is still certainly continued threats to Google and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the next couple of years. We've already seen users that start to prefer to use certain systems like Perplexity AI or even ChatGPT to get information on educational type queries like how do I make an apple pie? And that trend will probably content, continue. And at the same time, Google has started incorporating some of these language models in a chat-like interface into their search results pages as well. So this is going to continue to disrupt how we as both businesses and SEO experts attack and take advantage of these channels. But it is also likely that we'll see some continued shakeups with user behavior. And so we're keeping a close eye on this as we go. One thing that I think is really noteworthy in this example here, this was taken from about a month ago, um, a query for best training program where we can see on the left side is the old version of results where we get the traditional blue links. You'll also notice that those are all advertisements. So these are actually all paid search results at the top of the page. And on the right side, you'll see the new experience that they are testing, where essentially instead of providing me a, link of a list of resources, they instead have decided to try to interpret what I'm looking for and give me some conversational feedback on what some good training programs are. So as we see this happening, across search engines, we'll probably continue to see um, evolution of that user experience. And as a business, I wouldn't panic because what, what matters for showing up in this search generative experience is very similar to what matters for showing up already for organic search content and your SEO work. So I don't think it will require you as a marketer to behave entirely differently. But I do think what you're going to find is as Google continues to roll these out, they're going to limit the amount of traffic that is going to our businesses and to our search results because users can essentially just read the content here and never visit our website. So this is a really interesting space to watch. We're going to see the rollout of these um, LLM stands for large language model, Katrina. We're going to see the rollout of this user experience probably over the next six to 12 months. And this could really disrupt some of the things that we care about in terms of SEO performance. Okay, we talked about this a bit and I'll, and I'll go through it fairly quickly, but ads are really a good way to show up in Google. And one piece of advice I give to a lot of business owners is if you need to drive traffic tomorrow, advertising is often the most effective way to go from not showing up at all to showing up at the top of the page 
for relevant queries that your users or prospective customers could be searching for. Despite that fact, still 80 to 90% of traffic from most queries go to these organic results or non-advertising results. And that's part of what makes content so important is you really can't show up for a keyword unless you have a result that Google thinks is really relevant to their users when they search these queries. So as a business, you need to be prepared if you're going to compete on SEO to have a regular practice of identifying your keyword targets and publishing content, which will take you through that experience in this course. Um, overall, there are really three things you need to be successful if I were going to simplify this a bit from an SEO perspective. First is keyword strategy. So for those of you that engaged in the poll and have not thought about keyword strategy, this is definitely the place to start. So before you start executing or putting out blogs or content every day, every week, you want to make sure that you know what people are searching for, you know what's relevant to your company, and that you have a, a universe of keywords defined that you can, you can actually leverage in that content production effort. And we'll spend a lot of time on that today. Then there's a content execution piece. If you're not accustomed to creating content and promoting it regularly for your website, you really need to grow those capabilities to compete well on SEO. It's not that you need to publish an article every hour of the day, but even for a small business, getting in the habit of publishing a piece of content once a week or once every couple of weeks is a really good baseline habit to get into if you want to compete in search engines. And then the final piece is content optimization, which we'll cover pretty deeply in our final lesson four, which is once you've got that content produced, what your expectation should be as a business leader or a marketer is most of your content actually won't succeed for SEO. If you publish 10 articles, it's highly likely two of them are successful. And so what becomes a very important practice for you as a, as a marketer is to make sure in addition to doing the keyword research and executing your content well, that you don't just stop there. So we'll spend a lot of time in our, some of our later lessons deep diving on how to understand if content is working, how to understand if it's not working, and identifying where you may want to go in and repurpose content, rewrite content, or take content down from your website to continue to invest in the improvement of the metrics that you want to drive for your business. So today we'll spend most of our time on some initial dive into keyword strategy, but we'll cover some of these other topics as we go throughout the course together. Perfect, Jeff. So before we go to humans and bots, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, uh, and you can uh, stop sharing the screen. Um, I want to put this all into context for a business owner. So as a business owner, you have a couple ways you can make money, uh, le leveraging marketing, right? Um, uh, there's a couple ways you can use marketing to acquire customers. Uh, email uh, is one of the easiest and most profitable. Um, so having an email list and leveraging it to get new customers, you all understand that. Social media uh, is another one, both paid and organic. Um, there's non-digital things like signage, uh, you know, having a billboard up, um, having a flyer. Uh, all of these are forms of marketing. And then there's search marketing. And search marketing fits into two buckets. It fits into the paid and the uh, uh, and the free or the organic. Now, when you type into a search bar in Google and the results come out, some of those are advertisements and some of those are what we call organic or free search results. SEO is the art of getting your stuff to appear in the free stuff. So you'll remember he had that uh, image where there is the paid stuff on the top and the free stuff at the bottom. Most of the clicks, most people like in the magazine, skip the ads and just read the content. And that's also true with search. Most people um, are going to be clicking on the organic results. And as Google has gotten better and better and better, the organic or free results take different forms. Sometimes they're going to be in the form of a map. Sometimes they're going to be in the form of a list of articles. Sometimes they'll be in the form of a QA. and a um, But the bottom line is none of those are paid. You know, they indicate sponsored, and that means that someone paid to be there, and then everything else is organic. So the question of this course is how do you show up for that free stuff? We're not going to address paid advertising, what's sometimes known as PPC or pay-per-click in this in these four, four sessions. We're asking the question, how do you show up on the free part? 
because the algorithm that oversees the paid side is a totally different algorithm. They get sh they show up on the same page, but they're totally different algorithms that are that are looking at some similar but mostly different things. One of them being how much did you pay uh, in the auction? So we're talking about the free results. And then the question is, well, how do we leverage AI to do that more, better, faster? So that's what this course is all about. Um, Jeff, what else, just from a really high level perspective, would you like folks to understand about what we're talking about here and putting this in the context uh, of marketing a business? Yeah, of course. I think I think probably the there are there are two important points that I want to make about SEO, just so as you as a marketer or business owner have the right context when you're thinking about those investments. The first thing is that SEO takes time. So I I I think it's something like, I might be misquoting this stat, but it's something like 80% of content on the first page of results is a piece of article or an article or piece of content that's four years old. And so your expectation should be that as you start investing in SEO, this is really a long-term growth strategy. You can have some quick wins. It is possible to drive results quickly in the in the scale of 30 days or so. But what most businesses experience is they start the habits of producing content, picking keywords, promoting that content. And usually they see results in a six to 12 month time period in terms of the traffic they can get from it. So that's the first expectation. I and, I, and I want to just say something about this, which is this is pernicious, right? Because all the snake oil salesmen in the world can then sell you SEO services that get no results, that have a bum strategy. They're not even doing the work that's supposed to make it work. And you wouldn't know, even if you were an expert uh, you know, and you weren't interrogating it, you wouldn't actually know until six to 12 months. Because the, the ones that are credible, that are doing a good job, there's still a delay. What What is causing the delay? Well, you post some content on your website, Google has to search, uh, it has to index it, and then it has to start sh surfacing it for results. And if you're a younger website, those results might be hundreds of uh, pages into the search results because there might be a million results. So there's a lot of reasons why it takes time to, for Google to index it and then show it up on the first page, which is what you really want. And so the challenge is how do you manage that process? How do you know if it's working? That's what session four is about. So we're gonna to explain to you what the process is and then we're gonna show you how you can call bullshit uh, when you have an agency saying that they're doing work, you can actually measure their progress. Because in the end, you're not gonna get on page one of Google search results for most of your keywords because all of your competitors figured this out years ago and they've been doing it for years and you have to find opportunities to beat them at a game they've been playing far longer than you. Absolutely. And it's a great point. And we will spend some time when we talk about content optimization to give you guys the tools to figure out before I get traffic, what things should I be looking for to know that my content strategy is heading in the right direction. The second thing I'd mention at just a high level is when you're evaluating doing the advertising strategies versus the SEO strategies on Google, it is important to consider that though the SEO traffic is free in terms of you don't pay for the clicks, you still as a business are going to need to make an investment. Um, so my joke is that it's pay-per-click with just a lot more steps in between. <laughs> you know, you've got you make investments in keyword research, the right strategy, tracking, analytics, content productions, et cetera, to produce those results. So the way I like to think about it is the advertising side of Google is great for quick results to drive revenue quickly, drive that interest quickly. But then the downside is you're constantly paying for clicks. Whereas the SEO side, you can make an investment now. And though you may not see the results for three plus months, by the time you do see the results, you tend to get very exponential changes to the amount of traffic you're getting to your website, which can help you wean off of that advertising investment over time. And, you know, I like to think of SEO as an annuity. You invest a lot up front, you get no return. And then when it starts to pay you back, it pays you back forever. And there's obviously things you'll need to do to keep it high up on the Google search results. So there's like an, a maintenance component. But oh my God, it's incredible. Like you can get, you know, millions of site visits from your ideal customer with really solid SEO content, but it can take months and years to build to that. And it's a process that if you don't start with the right strategy from day one, will be fruitless. So that's why we want to start with the keyword strategy. 
Understand who your ideal customer is, understand what the keywords they're searching are that are high intent, understand which ones are winnable versus which ones do your competitors have a lock on, and then start investing in creating the content for that so that in the next six months, year, 10 years, uh, you get that annuity of continuous high quality traffic. Well said, thank you.